Hi, it's Smart Doll Hat Time. Now, this is the hat I did uh, look to go along with the crochet top the other day, and people had asked whether I would be willing to do it. It is a four ply hat, so it takes a little bit longer than some of the double knit versions that I've done, but it does come out really pretty. The actual yarn I'm using, it's called Sugar and Spice, and it is from Attic Spin Dye. Gorgeous yarn, I must admit, and the colours are absolutely stunning. I've just ordered a new skein that's just come through as well, which is another colour range. I can't wait to get going on that. Now, obviously, it does come in a skein, so you do have to wind it into a ball. We're going to be using a 3mm crochet hook today. Oh, as it rolls away. And obviously, I have my needles, etc. I have some scissors and I have my pen. I think I'm semi organized for once. I've also got my camera sort of angled on a different level. So I'm hoping not to actually knock it, which will be a first. I'm hoping this is going to work. So this is uh, Strength, which some of you have seen that I've recently got. And I've actually decided she's going to have a name. She's going to be called Brie because I looked for a name that meant strength and apparently Brie is one of those and I think she looks like a Brie I must admit I think that suits her quite nicely so this is the hat we're going to be making it is a slouch beanie so it has quite sort of a long base to it so it's slightly different from doing a basic beanie I'm going to move her out of the way because she will get in the way of the yarn so I'm going to pop her up that so she's completely out of the way and we're going to get going with this yarn i popped it in the yarn bowl because it is an actual ball and it does make a difference when you're running them like that because otherwise it'll be all over the floor so let's just get going i will mention if you are a beginner um it might be worth making sure you're comfortable with a four ply yarn because it is a lot finer as you can see and sometimes it does make a difference i actually prefer the finer yarns and the thicker i don't usually go much above a double knit anyway but also someone asked me if I could make the hat for a larger doll. Now the option for that is use a double knit yarn on a slightly larger hook. You could use a four mil hook and a double knit yarn and you're going to get a bigger hat. Or I'm going to deal with this as I go further on. We can look at how you can extend it as well from there. So slip knot time. Also, if you are a beginner, it might be worth having a look at the Granny Square uh, tutorial that I've got. I'm about to do a new one this afternoon because the other one's OK, but I don't think it's clear enough. So I'm going to do another one as well. So it's a good way to practice because this is approximately a Granny Square. Well, it's the same system as a Granny Square anyway. So let's get going. We're going to start with five chain. One, two, three, four and five. We're going to go into that first chain and create a slip stitch which then in turn makes us a little loop. Now it is a tiny loop. Now we don't want to go in this one that looks loose. So tighten that up before we get going. It's here. Can you just see where the little hole is? That is what we're wanting to work on. So we're going to do three chain. That three chain actually counts as our first treble. Then we're going to do a treble into the circle at the center. The hole will get a bit bigger as you go. So you'll be able to see it a bit easier. And we're going to do another one. So that gives us the equivalent three trebles. Now that's our first set. We're now going to do two chain. If I don't drop the stitch, that is, there's two chain. That is going to be where our corner is going to sit on the next round. And then we're going to do three more trebles into the same ring as the other three. One, two, and three. We're going to do two chain we're going to do another set of three trebles. It is UK terms, so they are trebles as in yarn round the hook once before you actually do them and going through two and two. So we have one set, two set, three set. We do two chain again and three more into that circle. One, three trebles. One, two, and three. Now that'd be enough if we were doing a granny square, but we want another side to this. So we get slightly sort of squared off sort of all the way around. What's five? What's for five? I can't think. What's a five? Oh, well, let me know in the comments. I'm sure you'll know. Right. Two chain again then. It's because we need that other set. And then three more. Our last three. Into here. Two. And three. Now usually you would have a chain to join but when I'm working this sort of fineness I prefer to keep the stitches as close as possible so I'm literally just going to go for a slip stitch so top of the three chain I'm going to do a slip stitch 
I'm going to do three chain because that's the start of my next round. Now you have to be careful here because you do need to make sure you get between these three and these three, but it's not obvious because they're closed together. So I'm just going to open it up a little bit so it's directly below that chain that we have done. Hopefully you can see that okay. And then we're going to do two more trebles in there because remember the chain counts as our first treble so that's the equivalent to three now this is going to be turned into a corner so we need two chain if it's a corner and then back into the same space another three trebles so we have one two and three so that's our first corner made so you can see we're gonna have one there one there one there and one there so we're gonna have five corners on this pattern the only time I'm chaining is between the two sets of the corners so off we go straight into the next space where we're going to do three treble one two three two chain and three into the space one two three so that's our second corner into the next one the same again it's a three a two and a three so that is three trebles two chain and three trebles that's one two and three so we've got two more corners to do so straight into the next space we have three trebles one two and three we have two chain and then we have three more trebles one two and three the next one the last corner so we do a three treble a two chain and a three treble so that is three treble that is two chain and our last three treble one two and three and we're going to have a slip stitch join if i can do it where we go into the top of that first three chain so now we can actually see we have five proper corners appearing yep so one two three four and five so now sides start to appear the thing is with a granny square or any sort of shape like this it just grows on its own you don't have to think about increasing or anything like that i know somebody had asked again about increasing well you don't need to you just do an extra round and it will increase itself so now we have we have two rounds done i'm just double checking what i have done so yes i have my first one and my second one we're going to continue with this pattern there are four of these in total so we've done our first one so i'm going to mark that down i want to start again with three chain each round will always start with the three chain and if you just spread it slightly you can see the space directly below it we need Two trebles in it that trebles not completed that's better now that one is what I'm going to count as a side because it's not where the two chain is so it's a side so if you can look that's a corner that's a side that's a corner that's a side so this was a side but the next one is a corner so in a corner it at the moment it is always three trebles two chain three trebles that will change later though so off we go three trebles one two three two chain and another three in exactly the same space into that two chain space one two and three the next one is a side so if you just stretch it you can see it's a side if it's a side it only has three trebles one two and three the next one is a corner so it's three two and three remember so we have three trebles that's one two and three two chain and three trebles back in the same space one two three next one is a side so it's just three trebles one two and three 
next one is a corner it's definitely working better this because normally i pull my wool out and i like to sort of hit my hand over there and every time i hit the camera so hopefully this is going to work that's one two and three two chain and three more in that corner one two three so next one's a side so it's just three trebles one two and three next one is a corner so at the minute they're alternating side and corner one two and three two chain three more in the same space one two and three next one's a side just three one two and three the last one is a corner so we need the sets again when it's a corner so it's three trebles one two three two chain and three trebles one two and three and like with every round we slip stitch join into the top of that three chain so you can properly see its size and shape coming now so that's another round i'm making sure i write these rounds down because i did it wrong earlier so we're going to do three chain one two and three you can see we now have two sides this is why i say it increases itself so each side now is going to have two sets of three and your corners is going to be your three two three so three trebles two chain three trebles so we just need three trebles into this that chain counted as the first one so we only actually need two for the first one don't we so now that's the equivalent to three in the next side space we're going to do three one two three we're next going to get to a corner so it's three two three. Oh, it will be if i can get the hook in place there we go so that is one two three two chain one two and three we have two sets on the side so these are just three in each one two and three and the other one on the side again now one two and three remember if i'm going a little bit fast i would recommend you can alter the settings to slow it down although my voice sounds a little bit silly then but at least it means you can see it because obviously not everybody's listening to me some people are just watching so then we're in a corner which is two trebles three trebles two chain and three trebles one two and three corners are always the same until we get a little bit further on but it's still still going to be essentially the same thing we have two sides to do so one set of three in each side one two three another one one two and three we have our corner which is our sets of three two three one two three two chain and then three one two and three two sides to go just three in each one one two and three another side one two and three corner three two three one two three two chain one two three we have two more sides to go so a set of three in each one two and three another side one two and three and our last corner for this round we have a set of three 
we have two chain and we have another set of three one two and three slip stitch into the top of the three chain pull it through and pull it through so we've definitely got a nice shape coming now i'll mark that one down we have only one more round of these i'm just double checking my counting if you want to count how many rows you're doing i find if you go from the corner so you can go one two three and four so i know i've done four now i'm just going to pinch breeze hat off so we can check so if you look on the top of breeze hat we have one two three four there's another one so i need to do another one there three chain and back the same but can you see now we actually have one two and three on the sides this is what i was saying about it increasing on its own we'll have a look at them when i've just done the three so just three trebles in each of those side ones this is our second side one and our third side one one two and three i'm going to stop there just to show you so can you see what i mean those are the sides so on this round every side will have three and every corner will be three two three so corner time one two three two chain and then one two three again in the same space one two and three we're now to a side so we've got three sets for the side so we have a three in the first one a three in the second one one two three and three in the last one for the side one two and three we now have a corner so obviously a corner is a three two three all into that two chain space one two and three two chain and three more also into that space one two and three and into the next one we've got three on the side here again so three trebles in each of the three that's our first one move along to our second one one two and three one more one two and three we now have our corner which is three two three so one two three two chain and another three in that same space one two and three so we're what we're there well we're just over halfway aren't we we've got two more corners to do so we have three on this side so three in each three one two three that's our first one second one one two and three our third one one two and three we have a corner so three two three pull a bit more yarn out here we go so we have one two three two chain and then three trebles one two three sides again these are last sides for this one one two and three that's our first one inside three in the next side one two three and in the last one for sides one two and three we have one corner and then that is going to be it for our increasing even though we've not physically increased it has increased one two three two chain and one two three again one two and three and slip stitch into the top of that three chain
So that is as big as it is going to go at this point for this hat, for the smart doll hat, for a doll that's got an eight and a half to a nine inch head. But if you've got a larger doll, I would recommend you do more rounds, but it's a case of a bit of guesswork that because it has to fit the size of your doll head. So you may need to do one extra, two extra, etc. Or as I mentioned at the beginning, maybe do it in a double knit yarn with a larger hook because you will get a larger hat just purely by doing that. So I've just marked off we've done that one. We are now moving on to round six. Now, this is going to be very similar, but instead of three trebles, we're going to just be doing two trebles. I'll show you what we mean. So we've got to start with our three chain anyway, haven't we? One, I don't drop it, two and three. So directly below, you're going to do one treble. So that gives us two trebles equivalent. So we're going to do two trebles into each of these sides, which we're now we've got four. Look, one, two, three and four. And when we get to the corner, you're going to do two trebles, two chain, two trebles. So it's bringing it in a little bit. So on to the next one with just two trebles. That's one. That's two. Again, that's one and two. Next one. One and two. And now we're on a corner. So as I said, it's the same sort of system as previous, but it's only two trebles, two chain, two trebles. So it curls it round a little bit. So we have two trebles, one, two, then two chain, and then two trebles, one. It'll feel a bit weird after you're doing three because you naturally want to carry on doing the three. Um, but we've got to remember, I know I, when I did mine earlier, I did go wrong. And at one point I did just one instead of three. I don't know why. But we are definitely trying to do two in each space at the side and two, two chain, two on the corners. You can see it's already starting to curl round a little bit, which is what we want it to do because it needs to shrink down to fit the doll's head. So we're on a corner, so I'm going to do a two, two chain, two. So two trebles, two chain, one and two to the sides again, just two in each one. That's the first one. Second one. Third one. And fourth one. We now have a corner, so it's two, three, two. So we have two, one, two we're going to have two chain we're going to have two trebles in the same space one and two we have the sides we're almost around we're over halfway so we have two in each of the sides so that's one that's our first one that's two that's our second one our third Our fourth, and we have a corner, so it's two and two and two, so it's two trebles. That one shrunk, there we go, two trebles, two chain, and two trebles. One and two. Right, we're on our last side now, so there's four sets on each side at the moment, so we have two in the first one. Two in the second one, two in the third one, two in number four, and then we have a corner again, so that's going to be two, two chain, and two. and slip stitch into the top. Now I'm going to put it down again. Can you see how it's starting to curl round? That's good. That's what we want. But this is the inner side of the hat. This is the outer side. So you can just push little bumps out 
and then you're working on the correct side. Now that was round six. We are now going to be going on to rounds seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. We have six rounds in total here. And what we're going to be doing is literally just two trebles in every space, even the corners. We're getting rid of those corners by doing this. It's just two trebles in every single space. So it'll pull it round even further. So off we go. So if you're going to be going ahead of me now, as I said, there's six rounds of this. So if you know what you're doing, I will see you at the other end. If you'd like to stay with me for a while, uh, you are more than welcome. And it'd be lovely to see a comment if you're still with me. Uh, it's nice to see if anyone does actually stay when you do those repeat rounds. So we're going to do three chain and below directly one treble. So that's the equivalent to two, isn't it? And now we have one, two, three, four. We have five on our sides now. So off we go. We need five sets of just two trebles. This is our third set. Squeaky wool. That's the fourth set. I can just hear it squeaking. And our fifth set. Now we've come to a corner now. Now we want to get rid of it as a corner. So all we're going to do is two, two trebles. That's it. You feel a bit weird because you've been doing corners all this time. But that is all it is. Feels like it's a big jump to the next stitch. But it is right. On to the next one. Two. So everything's just going to have two trebles in each one. Like I said, we're going to do those rounds six times. So we're only on our first one at the moment. I said, watch you don't go into autopilot doing threes. Easy done. Corner, so it's just three. Three, you see, I'm saying three. I'm telling you not to go in autopilot and I promptly do it. It's just two. No chains, just carry on round. So one, two. One, two, one, two. Sometimes if you do count to yourself, I know I sound like I might be a bit mad counting to myself like I do, um, but I do do it even if I'm not videoing. It sometimes reminds you what you're doing. So this is a corner one, but we're only doing two, remember. And then into the next one, two, one, Two. It's just a little habit I have. I'm terrible for counting absolutely everything. Even when I don't need to count, even when I put a stitch marker in place, I still find I'm counting stitches. We don't really need a stitch marker at this point. You will need one a little bit later on. And I've got a, a little bird cage one here. Look how cute that is. A little bird cage. Um, that came with my yarn actually, which was lovely. Because you always get a, like a little gift with your yarn as well. In fact, I think my bird came with my last one that I've just ordered that's come through, not with this one, but it's still cute. So we're on a corner, so I'm just doing two trebles and two trebles again. Nearly there. See, it's really curling round now. So one and two and one and two. Last set of two for this round. And slip stitch join in the top of the three. So let's have a look now. Can you see how it's really starting to curl round now, which is exactly what we're wanting. So I'm going to tick off the rounds as I go. That was our first one. So we have another five to go just like that. So three chain, one, two and three and directly below. Now you don't need to worry about any corners now because we got rid of them on this last round. All we are now doing is two trebles into every single space. But be careful, don't split those two trebles. You need to keep those two like that together, it's like a little V almost. Keep them together and it's stitching in between those two. Not in between those two, behind and in front of those two, should I say. I think that makes sense right keep going so this is the tedious bit i am afraid the beauty of variegated yarn it does keep you occupied because uh, i must admit I, 
if I have been known to fall asleep while I've been crocheting if I've been tired and it's on a boring bit. But the beauty of it's like now we get a nice shot of yellow. And it just sort of, I don't know, it just sort of keeps you motivated to go round. It's like waiting for the next colour. That's why I think I like doing scarves and shawls and things like that in a variegated yarn. Whether it be a long or a short variegation, doesn't matter. But, you know, you're going to come to a new colour change. And it just sort of, I know, wakes you up, perhaps. I just think it's pretty. I love this one. As much as it is called a sugar and spice, I think it's very floral. It sort of reminds me of spring and pretty things like that. And that's why I thought it would be a great hat for the doll. Watch this one, because you can see that's not very obvious, because that was where it was a corner before, so be careful. But obviously your smart dolls can have winter woolly hats. Uh, but I thought, well, you know, we do wear hats during the spring and the summer. So something a little bit lighter, that is why it is in the four-ply. But as I say, if you're not used to four-ply, I will recommend you have a go with some double knit in the pattern and just see what you think to it first especially if you are a beginner. Also keep checking on your doll in case your tension is either too loose or too tight. Mine's somewhere in the middle now. I used to be way too tight, but uh, my tension's balanced out again. Let's come out. Let's do it again. There we are. One and If you've now decided you're happy with what we're doing going round in the in the shape uh, so just pause it and come back to me when we come to our last well our first double crochet round actually it's our last treble round but it's our first double crochet round because after that I will be doing something decreasing so you will need to see that Weather's really funny here. It's really warm if you're in the sun and really cold if you're not in the sun. It's the wind, though. It just takes the chill sort of thing. And even yesterday it was trying to snow. It's very strange weather. So I've actually put the heating on in the house because it was a bit cold. But now I'm actually finding it a bit too warm because my craft room gets a lot of sun from the front. Um, so obviously it sort of works like a little bit of a greenhouse. Right, that was the last one of just two and we're going to slip stitch join there we go and that was our second round off we go again three chain and one treble below that's our first set Again, if you are a beginner and you're finding this sort of a little bit sort of fast or a little bit intense, I would recommend you try one of the beanies that I've got on the website. They're a little bit more, a little bit simpler just to get you going into the idea of it because they all work roughly on the same sort of patterning, but it's just the quantities and obviously the wool, the different yarns and things like that that can make a difference. But I do feel you do need to be relatively confident in the stitches to do this one if you do a lot of granny squares you're going to find this easy so what did i say we're on we're on number three aren't we so when i go around this one we're halfway there I'm just going to decline a call. I'm hoping it's not going to come up on sound for you guys. It was just my daughter. I did warn her that I was going to be doing a video. But um, she started crocheting since we've had lockdown. She never bothered before that, but she's got the two little ones. And she decided to do some crochet. Um, so I've had to be sort of teaching her remotely, which is a bit weird. Um, so she's having a go at some of the gloves that I've got on here at the moment. She's doing it exceptionally well. She really seems to be enjoying it. Because the shops were open today, she went and bought herself some more wool. I was tempted because my friend has a wool shop and she has a sale on. 
but I'm like, no, I have enough wool. I need to use the wool I've got. Because if you're like me and like a lot of uh, sort of yarn crafters, we have a tendency just to store wool because we can't resist it if we see a nice ball of wool. But I'm trying to use up some of mine at the moment, not uh, keep buying more. I only buy, say, I just bought another one off this uh, this company. But I try and make sure I'm going to use it up now each time rather than just store it in a box. It has to be something I need and something I'm going to use straight away. That's not. I'm not going to keep that up. I know I'm not. But that's the theory at the moment I'm going to be organised. So we're almost round on this third one of the six. The problem with a slouch beanie, it's a very long hat. So you have quite a few rounds. You could shorten it and make it more like a beret. You could probably about this point, we could say, right, okay, we're fed up, we're doing rounds. Um, and we could go straight into the double crochet bit and you're gonna get something resembling a beret if you do that. Oh, I don't think I've got it. Make sure you get a good piece there. You don't want that to be skinny because otherwise it'll, uh, be too loose when you do it there we go so that was our round nine but our third one of our actual sort of length because as you can see it's sort of quite a long hat we're on this part now and then we've only got that bit after that so it's not actually that bad it's just getting past these six i think that takes a little while so three chain add into the base of that three chain so i'm gonna might well i'm not gonna go much faster but i'm gonna sort of speed up a little bit so we can get round so just pause me and just do your round of two in each if that's the case I should never say i'm going to speed up because it always goes wrong it's one of them things when people are watching you doing something you can guarantee you'll go wrong I hope if some of you managed to get uh, this done and you're happy with it that uh, if you if you do do Instagram or Twitter or uh, Facebook or anything like that please tag me in it it's nice to see it I usually go for the sort of t most people tag me on the Instagram I think it's a little bit easier um, but obviously I've got my octopod in Facebook as well which you can always go and have a look at and you can always pop it on there and I, or I do have my uh, one where I've got my doll stuff which I'm wanting to change the name because at the moment it's BJD and all things mini. And yeah, BJD, fair enough. But that was in the days when they were just purely BJDs, whereas now my dolls are such a mix. In fact, I would say I've got more vinyl dolls and more fashion dolls. So I really could do with thinking about how to change the name. It's a bit of a pain changing a name on Facebook because they have to approve it. And if they don't think it fits a description of what you have, they will then turn it down. Because I know for Octopudding it was a bit of a fight. I had to sort of say to him, it is a business name and that's why I want it called Octopudding. Oh, that's a pretty pink. I love it when the pink and the grey go next to each other. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm just looking at the timer on my phone. It normally goes to about 33 and then it clicks on to another video but it's on 38 how strange so i don't know whether it has gone on to a second one and it's just the way it's timed it i think it's probably just gone on to a second one isn't it i don't really pay that much attention to it at that point we're almost round again one more and that is round four completed well round four of that style it is actually round 10 of the actual hat i am aiming to get the pattern out for tonight as well and pop on my website because my youtube channel uh, 
patterns are a little bit cheaper as well as my others because obviously you've got a YouTube tutorial to go alongside of it. So let's do three chain, one, two and three and let's get going on another round which is our round 11. So just two trebles in every single space. So I will pop it on the website. I know not everybody wants a pattern. That's why a lot of you uh, look on YouTube because you'd rather not read a pattern. It's easier to see somebody do something sometimes. But if you're like me, you do like a collection of patterns as well. Oh, spinning round nicely in that uh, little bowl. That's a Christmas present from my daughter, that one. It is lovely. I could do with a slightly larger one, though, because most of my bowls of wool that I roll up are quite big. And this does have a little lid, and I can't put the lid on because the bowl's too large. But it does make a difference rather than it rolling round the table. So this is 11, there's only one more to go after it. And then we'll be doing a double crochet round, but also we'll be doing a reduced row after that. So we'll have less stitches to do, so it will start to go quicker. Because you've got a lot of stitches here at the moment. I could do when I've done this um, well when I've done the next one after this I will show you how it fits on the doll to give you an idea because it does look loose and at this point you're going to be going oh it's too big it's too big it's too big I want to show you how it does actually sit and it will sit on the head too big but because of the nature of the style of the hat um, you need it to be too big at a certain point and then it brings it in tighter to fit definitely getting warm in here I suppose it doesn't help that I've got a lamp above me <laughs> I should have thought about that before I put the heating on never mind Just got one more for this round and then we're on our final it'll be actually a final treble round there'll be no more treble rounds after this next one so slip stitch join three chain and off we go again so this is actually round 12 but is the sixth of the ones where we're going just straight now some of you might be getting ready to rejoin me here for the next stage When I go quiet, I can hear the wall squeaking. Oh, we're coming to my favourite yellowy bit again. So it does really remind me of spring colours, even though it is called sugar and spice. So a, a mixture of spring flowers and things like that. Not that you get grey flowers, I suppose that doesn't make sense. But uh, it still makes me feel like it is. We'll, we'll call it a lilac, we'll call it a delicate blue, even though it is, I would say, a grey. Look what I've done there. Autopilot, not talking. Did three. Oh, that's how easy it is done. So remember, it's only two in each one. It was me thinking about spring flowers and I ended up doing an extra one. about halfway around on this last one now I 
I like how every now and again there's a little fleck of almost black as well, which sort of makes it interesting because you can see this fleck of colour. That's I really do like hand dyed yarns. I mean, this is a specialist yarn. I'm just having a look what it actually is. Um, we're 75% merino and 25% nylon. So you've got a lovely mixture there. And then obviously they're hand dyed. So you do have to be careful because obviously there's some washing instructions on this one um, so you do have to make sure you're careful it is hand washed but when it's doll things that's not so bad but obviously when it's clothing that gets you know it's a bigger deal to hand wash a big jumper than it is a quick doll hat that you can just do in a little bowl Remember, this is our last round. We've only got a few stitches to go. Counting down. And then we'll have a look on how it fits on our head before we start our final rounds, which there's not many of them to do. And slip stitch into the top. There we go. Right, as you can see, it's quite a bowl at the moment and you're thinking that's going to be way too big for the doll's head. So let's pull it over a little bit and I'll show you. It is baggy. It's meant to be. Look how loose that is. But that is the sort of looseness you need before you start decreasing. So we'll pop you back over there, missus. And what we're going to be doing now is just one double crochet into every single treble but I sort of cheat a little bit like with mine I will be writing in the pattern to do one double crochet per treble but I'm inclined to go in one treble if I can get in it yep and then one space one treble one space that's just how I do it you don't have to do that you can go in the top of every treble if you wish but I just find it easy to go in the space as the second one. And I also think it looks a lot neater. Obviously, we're on a double crochet now. So it's a smaller stitch. It's also a tighter stitch. So even before we actually decrease, it is pulling it in tighter. Just by the nature of the stitch. Because obviously a treble is a much looser stitch and a longer stitch so it's got more movement to it. Sometimes I've made smart doll outfits and just purely by changing between stitches will be enough to give you some shape. Not always, but sometimes that does work. So either into the top of every single treble or as I'm doing, one treble, one space. I just think it gives a nice edge. I don't know why, it's just something I started doing and I just prefer it that way. It just gives a bit more definition to that round. Oh look, it's gone through the little thing on its own. Oh well, I'll leave it there, see if it works that way. Normally it catches a bit through there. See if it'll just do it without me moving much. Well, touching wood, not that, oh yeah, wood, touch wood, not that I'm superstitious, but as they say, touch wood, um, I haven't knocked the camera once in this position, so I think this could be the answer. Like I say, it's a bit of a bodge performance, um, but uh, it's holding in place nicely. I don't know whether it would work for doll reviews because it's a little bit lower nearer me but uh, we'll have a go at some point Brie here is going to be helping me with a tutorial soon that's not working that way let me take it out of there that's better um, because I have some more little earrings 
from Kit and Cat, but I didn't show everybody the belly button process because I've got to try that myself yet. Oh, we're round, we're round, I'm talking. So I will be doing a video on that very soon. I am going to bring the stitch marker in because it is harder to see when you're working with a double crochet. So stitch marker in. So I don't have to overly worry about stopping and starting where I am. I can work it more amigurumi and just go round and round and round. So we have just done our round 13. Now round 14, it's going to be two together and then I'm going to do six stitches. That's an approximate. All I'm going to be doing it really is decreasing eight times around here. So I was like thinking one, two, three or four. And then in between each of those as well. So you could put a marker all the way around to show where you want to do a decrease. It's only an approximate. You don't need to overly worry about it. So my first stitches are going to be two together. Yeah, so when you get three on the hook, you can pull it through all three. Then I'm going to do six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Oh. Itchy nose for some reason. I'm going to do two together. So in, pull through, into the second one, pull through, three on the hook, pull it through all three. So I'm going to mark that down. So that's two now. We've already decreased. Six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So we're going to have another decrease. So into one. Don't pull it all the way through, I nearly did. Into the second one, we have three on the hook and pull it through all three. Mark it down, that's our third one. Six stitches. One, two, three, four, five and six. Decrease time. Mark it down. That's four. Six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Two together. Pull through all three. So that's five now. So we're doing well here. Six stitches. One, two, three, four five and six. Two together. That's our sixth. Six stitches. One, two, three, oh nearly, four, five and six. Two together. Oh this is a bit close. Two together. That was our number seven. Now I need to get an eighth one in. I'm a little bit close there. I would have liked them wider apart. So I reckon it to be like five stitches between each one. But again, it's a hat for the doll. We're not going to know any difference. So I'm just going to do three stitches and two together. Because this is the back of the hat anyway. So it'll pull it a little bit tighter. And just double crochet to our stitch marker. And that is my decrease round. There is no more decreasing. You can see how much it has brought it in. It's brought it in quite a lot. We now have three rounds. So rounds 15, 16 and 17 are all going to be just one double crochet into each stitch. Let's move that out of the way. And we're just going to use the stitch marker. We don't need to count. We just go round in your own time. Like I say, you may want to go sort of in front of me at this point and just finish off. If you're doing that and you get to the finishing off point, just fasten on off as usual and sew in your ends and it's done. But we will be trying it on Brie at the end. So work this at your own place, at your own pace or pause it. You do yours and then come back to whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. 
I will put on the uh, description what yarn this is because as I say some sock yarn is finer than a standard four ply so you might need to have a little practice. If that's the case it would only be fractionally and you know where we've just done eight decreases you might have to do nine or ten decreases that's all but I've noticed there is a massive variation very I'm say variegation then uh, a massive variation in yarns even double knits you'll get one double knit and it sort of feels really chunky and then you'll get another one and it feels really fine it's hard to get that consistency in yarns so if I've done something like in a specialist yarn like this I will mention the type so you can have a bit of a comparison I do find most sock wools are finer than, uh, I mean, I don't know what it actually says. Does it say, mm, I'm sure it says four ply on the site. It doesn't say four ply there. Um, but as I say, it is a sock yarn, so they're usually a little bit finer. God, make some gorgeous socks, this one not I haven't got patience for socks. I've tried, and then I get really fed up with them. So, and I hate turning on the round on the heel as well. I'll make some one day. <laughs> It'd just be like a tube if I made one because I can't be bothered to work it out. All right, so that's one round. We have two more to go and we're finished. Yay! I know this has been a bit of a long video. We're on 56 minutes at the moment and I haven't exactly been going slow so like I say if you do need to slow me down please do in the settings um, but hopefully you have enjoyed it please like subscribe and share don't forget to pop that on for subscribing I noticed if you click on my octopudding I think that gives you an option to subscribe because I've not actually got a subscribe button on the screen I've only got it on the, the little bit below well, on mine I have anyway I'm not sure because obviously you're viewing it slightly different i might have to get to uh, get my son to bring the site up to have a look and obviously if you click on the little bell you get notifications of when i've actually produced a new video obviously if you're wanting to do doll crochet and crochet generally you might not want to look at the dolls so there is a bit of a, a mix up there i suppose i'm predominantly doll reviews doll crochet or regular crochet I know some of you, like myself, will cross over with that, but not everybody does. I've got to get my sort of regular crochet, as I call it, done this week. I'm planning on a little spaceship, um, a little Amigurumi spaceship for a bit of fun. Because obviously Easter's over, so there's no more Easter fun. So I need to find something else, because obviously the next sort of thing that I will be doing that sort of people like to do more of would be oh I don't know would it be Halloween I think it would be so I've got some, some little aliens made and I've got a little spaceship so I thought they'd be just a little bit of fun make nice little gifts or silly little things to maybe sat, sat on your desk or on a shelf right we need just one more round the depth of this is up to you you could actually make this rim a lot deeper if you wanted to but i did it on three so i'm just doing it as i actually did for this hat so this is our last round you'll be able to give your hands a rest then i know mine are somewhat tired because this is actually the second time i've done this video because i did it earlier and for some reason i increased way too big because i wasn't concentrating and um, i ended up realizing it was wrong a little bit too far along so i decided to completely scrap it and start again so it's uh, my shoulders are starting to ache as well now <laughs> it's because i'm sat in a funny position as well because obviously I have to lean forward. I don't normally crochet um, this far forward, only on my videos. I normally crochet quite close to my body. Yay, we're nearly there. Just get round to that stitch marker and we have finished. There is only, even though we get all these colours here, again, another beauty of variegation, um, but there's only two pieces of yarn that you need to sew in, obviously, round the middle at the top. Make sure that is nice and tight. And also this last one that we're going to have where we finish off on the band. I 
I need to get on with because I'd had said the ones who watched me do the video of uh, strength here or Brie as I've now named her um, I'm wanting to do this apocalyptic outfit so if I get some crochet done on that I might do a little video on that as well the only thing is the larger the garment the longer the video if I'm doing it in real time right last couple of stitches yay last one in fact I would say make that a stitch I'll make the last one a slip stitch because I feel it just smooths it off a little bit if you do that scissors at the ready pull the yarn through and take the stitch marker out now obviously you've been with me for a while here We've been doing just over an hour, so you're probably ready for your eyes to have a rest. But we're going to check on Brie that it fits nicely. So I'm going to bring her here. It's closed up. Can you see how much it's closed up from there, the width? It has closed up quite considerably. And I'm going to pop it on her head. I'm doing her upside down here. And then I just pinch to one side. And there she goes. I've pulled that on a little bit low there, Mrs. haven't I? Let's move it up a bit. That's better. So we have a slouch beanie that will fit a smart doll or an, it actually fits the, pull, well, my pull-ups, I've got dolls rather than pull-ups, but it does actually fit the dolls and the bales and that size as well. So anything sort of eight and a half to nine inch size head, it will fit. If you're wanting to increase it, do that extra round that I mentioned earlier or use the double knit yarn and a larger hook. And I think that would work perfectly. Thank you once again for watching. It was a long video. You've been very patient. So please like, subscribe and press that notification bell if you want to see anything else. And I will see you all very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.